Howdy everybody, this is Bake, IronThroneCraft.com. Today we're going to talk about the new changes that just came out in Iron Throne. So, building enhancements, hero houses, and new obelisk levels. Uh, did a write-up on IronThroneCraft.com, you can go check it out there as well if you want the written version of this. But basically, these new changes are pretty expensive um, in terms of resources and other stuff that's required. And a lot of people don't have the orbs, gold is obviously a huge issue, so... First and foremost, what I'm going to do is just talk about kind of the priority list that I have in my head that I'm going to be prioritizing here. So, if you look at the new obelisk levels, you see you can spend 22 million gold a day. I don't think uh, many people can spend 22 million gold a day. So, you want to find what's comfortable for your gold amount. Um, you see, if you use 40 a day, that's going to be 1.2 million gold. That's still quite a bit of gold right there. Uh, drop it down to 10 and it's almost free up to 20 usually on the old obelisk what I was doing was 20 a day That's still still 225 K gold a day, but it is what it is um, What you want to look at when you're doing these obelisks is these set effects um, Obviously, you're not going to be able to just fully max out all these obelisks quickly You wouldn't even be able to if you had a gazillion gold because you have to wait every day So what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm leveling up 100 points at a time in order to hit my set effects so you see here, this is the big one, which is creation and gold. Obelisk of creation, which gives you um, stuff in domination, and then obelisk of gold, which gives you, I think it's gold moon, which nobody really wants, but you get blessing of HP from it, that set effect. So what I'm doing is I'm leveling my obelisks 100 points at a time in order to maximize those set effects. And that's how I'm doing that. I'm going through and just trying to get those set effects up higher 100 points at a time. So do whatever your gold level is comfortable with in order to, you know, get these things up. Because you are going to want, obelisks are a huge deal. But maximizing your set effects from that actually helps outside of those events as well. Because the set effects from the obelisks there, they also apply to everything else. So you want to make sure that you're getting those set effects up. Now, for building enhancements, the big thing for building enhancements is that some of these buildings give leverage debuff, which is massive. See how my wall, I can't upgrade it anymore? Because the first thing I did whenever these new building enhancements came out is I came and I upgraded my wall. The reason for that is because I am an infantry single type trap. Your wall increases your leverage debuff for archers. So see, if you look at command center, you go to enhance there. See how command center enemy lever infantry leverage attack debuff? That's the biggest buff you can get from all of these building enhancements. So your command center and your wall, and then I think it's your warehouse. Nope, not your warehouse, your other one. Yeah, it is your warehouse that reduces cav leverage attack. So based on what troop type you are, if you are single type, this is the single most important building for you is whichever one reduces the leverage. After that, your prison gives you very large troop attack, defense, and HP? I don't think it's HP, actually. We'll see in just a second. Uh, yeah, it is HP. So you see that fully enhanced 509, 282, 268. That's from prison. So what I recommend doing is whatever troop type you are, do the leverage debuff on that. After that, do the prison. After the prison, do the single type troop building. So if you're infantry, you're going to do the training grounds for infantry. After all of those are done, then go in and do your altar after that because altar gives a very large amount of stats from it and you get a percentage increase on that. So your top most important buildings to do by far number one if you're single type is to do the leverage debuff for building for that you want to do the leverage debuff so if you're infantry you want to do the wall if you are um, cav you want to do the command center and if you are archer then you want to do this one right here the warehouse um, after that after those you go in do your prison after your prison do your single type building which uh gives you additional HP for your single type stat. And then after that, finally go and find the one that gives you defense. That's going to be either command center, wall, or warehouse. So that's those are the most important ones for you to upgrade by quite a bit um, in order to uh, maximize your defense here. So I'm going to go in and pop my altar off real quick and level up the altar there. So now, hero houses. A lot of people had a lot of hero stones, or they didn't have a lot of hero stones because they've been leveling a lot of different heroes. Uh, the hero houses provide a massive, massive boost for your specific heroes, obviously. The blue stones right here, if you maximize that, you see all those single type stats? That stuff all applies when you're doing steeples. If you are stuck on the steeples, pop these blue stones up. 
Also, they give you a lot of single type stats just overall. Uh, you see the purple stones. What the purple stones add now is they add some HP debuff. So what I recommend doing for your power of the house stuff like that. If you see this, this is my guard captain. See how it's at 100 out of 140 on the on the blue stones. What you want is you want to maximize those blue stones, number one, on your guard captain. Number two, you want to maximize your yellow stones on your guard captain. Uh, these ones right here. Takes 4200, you do that, and it'll pop all the way up. Watch the stat defense or stat difference that changes here whenever I maximize this guardian, these guardians here. So you're probably going to be low on stones now because these require a whole lot of stones. So you want to make sure that you are focusing on certain heroes and getting them upgraded. So for number one, right off the bat, basically the most important stones that you can spend are going to be the blue ones and the yellow ones on your guard captain. That will help you to defend your base uh, further. If you want to like for attacking you need to focus on the purple stones on your lead attack hero and then the green stones on your lead attack hero so if you look at my death lord here he's got it maxed out he's going to do an extra 50 percent debuff the purple stones that's all they provide it's just a 50 percent debuffs by going from 60 to 100 if you go look at my adali here he doesn't have it done here so see how the tier 7 up at the top the, that amount didn't change that means that like you're not getting additional tier 7 damage off of this so what you want to do, what I recommend doing is maximize your blue and yellows on your guard captain and your deputies, maybe your deputies, um, if you're low on stones, and obviously you're going to have to make a personal decision on that. And then after that, I always say that you should pick, what I've done is I pick four heroes, and I take those four heroes and I juice the heck out of them with my power of the houses. That way I'm fully min-maxed, and I just engrave all of my gear to those four heroes. So I know I've got a ton of heroes over there, those ones are all for different purposes and stuff like that. I've got four heroes that are just my big badass heroes. That are those are going to be the ones that I've got all my I'm dumping all my house stones into in order to fully min max. Uh, and by four I mean eight because I got my four attack heroes and then my four defense heroes. So focus up, get your priorities right, and you will be able to do a lot more damage.